There are a million ways to manipulate the DOM, but you really only need to know 14 different techniques. So in this video, I'm going to show you every single one of them so that you can become a DOM manipulation master. Welcome back to Web Dev Simplified. My name's Kyle, and my job is to simplify the web for you so you can start building your dream project sooner. So if that sounds interesting, make sure you subscribe to the channel for more videos just like this. Now in this video, I'm going to be covering everything you need to know about DOM manipulation. And to get started, I just have a blank HTML file that links to a script file. And then in here, I have our script file. We can write code in here, and it's going to run on this page on the right side of our screen, which as I mentioned, is a completely blank page so far. And if you're interested in taking your JavaScript skills to the next level, make sure to check out my full JavaScript course linked in the description below. It doesn't open for a couple months, so if you're interested, just go there and sign up with your email, I'll let you know when it opens. Or if you're from the future, go there and you can check out the complete course right now. So without any further ado, I just want to jump into the very first technique of DOM manipulation that I want to cover, which is adding elements to the page. Super simple. There's two different ways that you can add an element to the page. The first thing I want to do is select the element we're going to be adding this to, which is going to be the body. So I'm just going to get a variable and set it to the body. So we can just say document.body, and that's going to be the body, which we can append elements to. And speaking of the word append, that is the method we use to add elements to the body. So we can say body.append, and you'll notice we have two choices. We have append, and we have append child. These are almost identical methods, but they have a few differences. First, we're going to look at append, because one nice thing about append that is different from append child is that we can actually append strings. So I could just say, hello world. And when I save this, you can see the string hello world prints out on the screen. So with append, I can append strings. But if I used append child and I save, you're going to notice the string doesn't show up. And if I actually inspect my page and I look at my console, you're going to see we actually get an error saying that append child requires a node and not a string. So that's one difference between append and append child is that with append child, you can only append elements like divs or spans or anchor tags, while with append, you can append all of those as well as also append strings. Also with append, something that's really cool is we can append multiple things. So if I want to append hello world and I want to append by, I can just pass them both in. You can see that they both got appended right next to each other. But with append child, I cannot do that. Not only is it because these are strings instead of elements, but you can only append one thing at a time. You can't just pass a bunch of things to append child. So this is why generally I like to just use append instead of append child since they do the exact same thing, but append has a little bit more versatility so you can actually append strings as well as multiple things all at once. But what if you wanted to append an element instead of a string? Because generally, let's be honest, you're not gonna be appending strings to your page. You're generally gonna be appending elements. So how do you make an element? Well, it's actually very easy. With creating elements, all you do is document.createElement, and in here, you just pass the type of element you want to create. As you can see, all the different you know, HTML elements are here. So generally, you may create a div, for example. Let's create an element that's a div, and we'll just say const div is equal to that. So we created a div right here. But right now, if we save, nothing's going to happen. We inspect our page, and we go and look inside of our body. There's no div inside of here. There's nothing in there. And that's because we've created our element, but we haven't actually added it to our page. This is a crucial step that many people don't realize. Creating something in JavaScript is different than adding it to the page. All we've done is create a reference to some element, but now we need to add that element to our HTML. So to do that, we can just say our body dot append div. And now we've appended the div to our page. Obviously we can't see that because the div is just empty, but if we open up our body, scroll down to the bottom, you can see this div is now added to the bottom of our page. And if we wanted, we could add some text inside of that div and we can actually see the div on our page. So in order to add text to our div, there's actually two different ways we can do it. We can say div.inner text. We could set that to some text like hello world. Now when we save, you can see we get the text hello world being printed, but this time it's a little different because it's inside of a div. Also, we come back over here, we could use append child instead. And you notice that the hello world is still here because append child allows you to append elements as well. But like I mentioned at the beginning, I generally prefer to use append. So inner text is one way that we can set our text. The next way is by doing text content and set that. Oops, if I spelled content correctly, and we could set that to hello world too. If we just comment this out and save, we get the exact same result. And when we inspect our page, we go down to our div, they both look exactly the same. So what is the difference between inner text and text content? They look like they do the exact same thing. 
And in general, when you're actually setting text to inner text or text content, they're pretty much the same. But when you view the text of an element through inner text or text content, they actually differ a little bit. So what I wanna do is I just wanna have a div here. And inside this div, I'm going to have two spans. The first one is gonna say hello. And this second span is going to say bye. And if we save that and just comment out all this code for now, we can see hello and bye being printed to the screen. But this one, I wanna give a style where the display, oops, display is going to be none. So now this by is completely invisible. So now if we select that div by just saying document.query selector of div, and if you're a little bit confused on how all the different selectors in JavaScript work, I have an entire tutorial on it. So you can check that out in the cards and description. So we just say div is equal to this. And now let's say console.log div.text content and then down here, we're gonna do the inner text. If I save that and inspect our page, go over to our console, you're gonna notice something interesting. The text content prints out hello and bye, and you also notice it prints out all of the spacing around these as well as the indentation of all of that, while inner text just prints out the text that's visible on our page, as you can see here. This is the difference between the two. Text content is going to print you out the exact text content, all of the spacing, all of the indentation, of all of the content inside the div. So in our case, that's this hello, as well as this by. But inner text is different in that it looks at the CSS to see, is this actually visible on the screen? If so, I'm going to give it to you, otherwise I'm not. Also, we just remove this here and resave. You'll notice that these show slightly differently because the way text content works is it just copy and paste the text essentially directly from your HTML. But what happens with inner text is it actually displays your text just like it would be displayed inside of your HTML. So as you can see here, our text inside the body, you know, if we go into this div here, has all the indentation around it, while inside of our HTML, they're just next to each other with a space in between them. So when we print out the inner text, it just prints it out like the HTML would, while text content is actually printing it out as the HTML itself represents it with all the extra spacing and showing the invisible elements. So that's the main difference between text content and inner text. Really, for the most part, this is not gonna be a big deal, but it's nice to know when you're accessing them whether or not you're gonna get invisible or visible information using inner text versus text content. So we've talked about appending, creating elements, and modifying the text inside of them, but something else we can do is modify the HTML inside of an element. So let me just remove what we have inside of our body here. So we have completely blank body again. I'm gonna remove this code and I'm gonna uncomment this back. So we have exactly what we had before. We created a div and we set the text to hello world too. What if we wanna actually put HTML inside of here? Let's say we wanted this to be bolded. So we'll put the strong tag in here and we'll do a strong tag here, close that off. And if we save, you notice it just prints out the text exactly as is. And it doesn't matter if we use inner text or text content, they both work the same. If you want to render HTML inside of a div or inside of any element, you need to use what's called inner HTML. Now, if I save this, you'll notice that this becomes bold now, and it actually uses these HTML tags to render out the content. Now, this is really powerful since you can render HTML directly from your JavaScript, but it is a huge security problem because if you allow users to put user-generated content into an inner HTML, they could write malicious code. And instead of going super in depth on the security concerns of this, I'm gonna reference another video I created specifically on this concept. It's linked in the description down below and the cards above. But just know that inner HTML is the only way in JavaScript where you can actually add HTML from a string into an element like this. Another thing you could do is you could create a new element. We could say const strong equals document dot create, whoops, dot create element. If I can spell correctly, there we go. Call it strong. And then we can say strong dot inner text is going to be equal to hello world two. And then we can just say div dot append strong. And now if we save, we get the exact same result we had with inner HTML. We just broke it out and wrote the JavaScript by hand. This is a much more secure way to do this. If for example, this inner text here, hello world two is provided to you by the customer or by, you know, user of your website as opposed to being hard coded. But either way, we get the same exact results done. And it's nice to know that you can use this append on any element. It doesn't have to be the body. It can be any element on your entire page. So now I'm just gonna go back to our HTML. I wanna bring that code back that we had with this hello span. And I'm just gonna give this an ID of hi. I'm gonna give this one an ID of bye, just like that. 
That way we have some HTML to work with. I'm just going to get rid of all the code that we have here so far. I'm just going to say const div is equal to document dot query selector of div. And I'm going to say span one, or we'll call it span high is equal to document dot query selector of i. And then we had span by. These are just our three different elements that we just created. And what if you want to actually remove elements from the DOM? So far, we've talked about all the different ways you can add elements and modify the content inside of them. But what if you want to remove an element? Let's say we want to remove this by. What we could do is we could just say span by, and we could call the remove function. If we do that, you can see it completely removes that element. And if we inspect our page, it doesn't even appear inside of the HTML at all. It's completely gone. So it just deletes it from existence. We could come back and later add it. We could say div dot append span by and it would add itself back in if we wanted it doesn't you know completely irreversibly delete it we still have access to it but it removes it from the html and we'd have to add it back ourselves if we wanted another way that we can remove elements is by removing them from the parent we could say div dot remove child and if i spelled remove correctly all we need to do is pass in a child for example span high and you can see that it removes the span high that is a child of our div Generally, I just use remove because if I have access to the element, why would I want to do remove child? It's easier just to say, you know, span high dot remove. This is way easier in my opinion, and it does the exact same thing. So generally, I use remove instead of remove child. So that covers a lot of the ways that you can manipulate the HTML directly removing, adding elements, and so on. But what if you want to actually just get properties of elements or add classes or data attributes and that kind of stuff? This is honestly where I do most of my DOM manipulation. And luckily, there's a ton of different tools we can use. The first one I want to talk about is how you can modify the actual attributes of an element. If we go back over here, we can just go to our span. Let's give it a title of, you know, hello. And all a title does is when you hover over something, if I just stop myself from removing it, if we hover over it, eventually you're going to get a tooltip that says your title. So that's one attribute. And we also have the ID attribute on it already. And let's say we want to access these attributes inside of JavaScript. Well, we could just say span high, and we could say get attribute, and all we do is pass it the name. For example, ID. Let's just come in here, console.log that out. And now if I inspect this page, and we go to our console, you can see it prints out the ID, which is high. I could also get the title, which is hello, and you can see that prints out itself. But I don't really use get attribute that much, because I could also just say span high dot ID. It prints out high. I could say span high dot title and it prints out hello. So generally, if there's an attribute that you would get with get attribute, whoops, get attribute, it's generally available already as a method on the element itself. But the nice thing about get attribute is it's really explicit what you're doing. So sometimes you may not have the attribute available as a method on your actual element. So using get attribute is a great way to get around that. Now, the next way you can do is with set attribute. So I could say set attribute. I want to set the ID to the value of uh, we'll just say this. And now if I just come over to my elements and I go to that element inside the div, you can see our ID has been changed to that SDF SDF that we typed in. Also, I could change the title. So I could say title equals that. And now again, if I select that element, our title has been updated. So we can use set attribute. But again, I could always just change the ID like this. I could say the ID is equal to, you know, SDF SDF. I'm just going to take this out of a console log and I save. And you can see again, I updated the title that way. So you can use either one with get attribute and set attribute. It really doesn't matter. Now, the last thing, which is much more useful in my opinion, is remove attribute. And just like the others, give it your attribute you want to remove, in our case, title. And now if we go to that element, you can see it no longer has a title. Or we could remove the ID. And now it no longer has an ID. So remove attribute is a great way to remove attributes from an element really easily, super explicit. It's really nice. Now, the next thing you can do for manipulating elements is to deal with data attributes, which are just like normal attributes, but they start with data hyphen and they're custom attributes you can add to elements. And if you want to learn more about data attributes, I have a whole blog on them. I'm going to link down in the description below so you can check it out. We'll just say data, we'll call this test and we'll set it equal to this is a test. We can get rid of this title here for now. And now what I want to do is get that data attribute. And luckily in JavaScript, this is really easy to do. It's a property called data set, which contains all of your custom data attributes. So I just want to log out what data set is so we can see exactly what we're working with. If I go over to the console, you can see we get this DOM string map and it has our test property 
and it says this is a test. So you noticed it took our data test, converted it, it got rid of the data part and just said test and then it has the value. Let's come in here and add another one. We'll say data longer name, just like that. And we'll set that equal to you know, just random text, doesn't matter. And now when we look in here, you see again that data hyphen part has been removed and also the text longer hyphen name has been converted to camel case, which is like the JavaScript way of doing things where it has a capital N and it doesn't have hyphens. So now what we could do is we could say, I want to get the you know data test property. So I say dataset.test and it prints out this is a test. What if I want to get the longer name? Now it prints out that SDF SDF that I typed in. So with data sets, you can really easily access any property just by typing it out. And you can also set properties just as easily. So I could set a new property, say new name is equal to, you know, we'll just call this high. And now if I grab that element and I look at it, you can see we have data hyphen new hyphen name is equal to high. So it converts this camel case version into a hyphenated version. And it also adds that data hyphen at the beginning. So you know that it's a custom data attribute. Data sets, super useful. And I use them literally all the time inside of my JavaScript code. The next thing I want to talk about is classes. So we can get all the classes of an element. Let's just come in here and add a class to the span. We'll say class is equal to, uh, we'll give it two classes. We'll say hi one and hi two. These are our two different classes. So now what we can do is we can just take that span high. We can access a property called class list. And this class list has a ton of different methods you can use to modify different classes, add, remove, and so on. I actually have an entire blog article on it, which I'll link in the description below. It goes in a bit more depth, but I'm going to cover the most important ones in this video. So you have class list .add, which allows you to add a class. We'll say new class, save that. And now if we look at our class list, it has new class inside of it. We could also remove a class. So let's say I wanted to remove the high one class. I just say remove high one. If we look over here, it didn't actually remove itself because I spelled high one wrong. Now, if I save again, you can see high one has been removed because we used remove. And we also have toggle, which is really useful. We could say toggle high two. And what that's going to do is it's either going to remove it if it exists already or add it if it doesn't. So if it says high three, you can see it added high three because we didn't have that class yet. Also, we can pass a Boolean to this, whether it's false or true. And what it will do is it will automatically remove it if we pass in false or if we pass in true, it'll automatically add this class. So it's a great way to do adding or removing just based on a Boolean. And those are probably the most common ways you're going to use class list. Now, the final thing I want to talk about when it comes to DOM manipulation is directly modifying the style property of any element. The style property is essentially a way to access any CSS property. Let's say we wanted to set the color here to red. Now, if I save, you can see the text has turned red over here. If I wanted to access the background color, it's going to be slightly different. You'll notice that I actually convert the CSS property, which is background hyphen color, and I camel case it just like this as if it was data set. And now when I save, the background color has turned red. So if you'd want to set any CSS property, just do style dot, and then that property name converted to camel case, and then you set it to whatever value you want. For example, in this case, red. If you're interested in taking your JavaScript skills to the next level, make sure to check out my full JavaScript simplified course linked in the description, which is going to teach you everything you need to know about JavaScript. Thank you very much for watching and have a good day.